Batman has finally tracked and found the captured, beaten up Nightwing, but Lex Luthor betrays and seemingly kills Nightwing for the greater good. So, going back before any of that, we see Batman being forced to work with Lex Luthor and his little team of criminals as the crime syndicate has seemingly killed the Justice League and taken over this world, leaving only a select few heroes and more bad guys. And with it being their top priority to not only break into the Watchtower as the crime syndicate infiltrated and took it over, but also to see if there's any source of where the normal Justice League has wind. And as they make their way down to the hall of the Watchtower, Sinestro uses his ring to scan for any anomalies. While looking like he's absolutely mogging the rest of the team, he picks up six anomalies with his ring and only two located in the Watchtower. And with that, Batman, as always, starts to form a plan, saying there's a manual shutoff to the security systems I put in. I can program it to loop the video feeds for one minute before cutting the lines. And with Lex bringing up a good point, why would you design your own security system with a manual override Batman? Unless of course, you thought you might have to take on the Justice League yourself one day. And then Batman completely ignores him as he is right on the money, he continues to work and eventually they get in. And as they are in, Batman seems to be going his own way, forcing the team to split up, with Lex telling Captain Cold and the rest to find more crime syndicate members and kill them. But as Batman, Lex, Catwoman, and Bizarro turn to Hall, they find Nightwing, but he is attached to a no good machine called the Murder Machine. And you don't exactly have to be a genius to figure out what type of purpose this machine has. Moving over, we see Grid, the crime syndicate's versions of Cyborg, and Alfred, who is really just Alfred, but evil finally figure out that the cameras have been sabotaged and that they've been infiltrated. So because of this, Alfred goes to check on a very important prisoner they have on board. And as he's making sure he's secured, he gets blindsided and grabbed by Black Manta. And what unfolds even catches Captain Cold, a hardened criminal off guard, as Black Manta literally brutalizes Alfred while saying they all die. And with Captain Cold still taken aback a little bit, saying, yeah, they will, but what about this one? Is he one of them? Before pointing at the prisoner, which will become super important later. But moving back over to Batman, Nightwing, and Lex Luthor, Nightwing is seemingly okay, or at least alive, which is the most important thing for Batman. As Batman goes up and apologizes to Nightwing for not being there when you needed him to, suddenly the door slams shut and they are locked in there. As a five minute timer starts to count down, and even if this wasn't called the murder machine, this situation wouldn't be good regardless. And with Lex Luthor saying, this isn't just a fancy pair of handcuffs, it's a bomb. And with Batman knowing this, his first choice is to try and get Nightwing out of there and disarm it. Whereas Lex Luthor and Bizarro try to break down the doors, but to no avail. As Batman reveals, this room was meant to hold Doomsday. So they're left with really one option. Well, two, do nothing and die or try to disarm the bomb. But unfortunately, as Nightwing points out, the bomb, it only disarms if his heart rate stops. As the detonator is literally hooked into his chest, meaning they either have to kill Nightwing or everyone dies, creating the ultimate dilemma for Batman. Take one life to save the lives of not only himself, but others. And with Nightwing himself even saying they still have time, they need to just leave him and try to find a way to get out of here. But Batman, feeling absolutely guilty from leaving Nightwing and allowing him to get in this situation in the first place, saying, no, I am not leaving you. I'm not abandoning you again. The only way we're getting out of here is together. But unfortunately, the wires, every time Batman tries to cut one, it fixes itself. All while the timer beeps down slowly from five minutes to now three. And remember before how I said this is a dilemma for Batman? Well, it's absolutely not one for Lex Luthor. As Lex Luthor would be comfortable sacrificing hundreds if not thousands of people's lives if it meant saving his own. But just then, Lex then shoots Batman in the back, much to Catwoman's disapproval, but she is easily stopped by Bizarro. I'm making an executive decision. I'm saving our lives by ending his. I'm sorry, Grayson. As he seems to put his hand over his mouth, looking like he might break his neck. And as Batman recovers, he and Catwoman starts to fight Bizarro. And with Batman needing to even the odds, he puts on a kryptonite ring. And because Bizarro is a clone of Kryptonian DNA, the kryptonite ring is obviously very effective and with Batman punching Bizarro saying Luther you hurt him and I will kill you which regardless of the situation do you know how badly you have to mess up for Batman the guy notoriously famous for having a no kill rule to even threaten to kill you now even if he doesn't and he's not actually going to kill you Batman's never typically the guy to even threaten to kill someone let alone probably be serious in this case but picking back up with Black Manta and Captain Cold we see them unmask the person in the chair who is bound up 
but seems like a normal person. And with them removing the rope, and most importantly, the duct tape, the greatest thing holding this person back, but before anything can come of it, they get blitzed by Johnny Quick and Atomica, with Johnny saying, ah, ah boys, do not touch. And as Atomica goes for Black Manta trying to get away into his suit, Johnny Quick has Captain Cold pinned against the wall, saying, you know, I killed you on my Earth too. You didn't have this stupid freeze gun though. It's not a freeze gun, it's a cold gun. You see, lots of guys shoot ice, but I don't. I literally stop movement altogether. I stop Adam's cold. I'm the man who mastered absolute zero. So even though he's a lot more powerful than a guy that can just freeze things, realistically, the Flash should still never even get hit by something like this, let alone lose Captain Cold. But he is one of his rogues for a reason. And as Johnny Quick pointing out as he has the gun in his hands, it doesn't matter if you can stop things, absolutely if you don't have your finger on the trigger. But Captain Cold is a smart man, as he has voice control on it. And the phrase that activated is Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, as it then shoots Johnny Quick in the leg, for Captain Cold literally shattering it, making it so Johnny Quick can never run the same again. Now the next part of this comic happens side by side and parallels the end reveal. As you see Atomica yelling in distress saying, are you insane? You took the tape off of him? Quake, pit it back on, shut him up. As we see the mysterious individual say, look at your precious speed demon, he'll never run again. Before shouting a word that really I don't even want to try to pronounce and a giant lightning bolt comes down from the sky striking him. And while this is going on, Luther still has his hand on Nightwing's mouth, saying, it's the only way to save us, Batman. And as a heart monitor seemingly flatlines, Batman then is able to get to Luther, jumping him. But unfortunately, it seems Batman is too late, as Nightwing hangs his head down, looking like Luther has actually got to him. With Batman beating Luther senseless, saying you murderer before he even has a chance to explain what he did all the while the mysterious individual catches up to johnny quick who is still legless and crawling on the ground saying you're not going anywhere before grabbing him by the throat and actually snapping it killing him instantly and using some sort of electrical power and absorbing his saying your life is over but your power is mine and as batman is still beating luther luther tries to explain to him that he has the situation under control that is not too late to save Grayson, but Batman in a fit of rage isn't hearing him. But with the other person, it's revealed that he is Alexander Luther from the parallel earth, saying he's here and going to kill every single one of you. And Alexander Luther shall be the most powerful hero your world has ever seen, showing him with the power of Shazam, plus now the power of Johnny Quick, a speedster, with some ability that allows him to take the powers of others' people, and showing a parallel between one Luther who seemingly took a life to save the rest of them, versus another Luther who took a life to give himself more power. But yeah, that's the end of this issue. Even though this story came out in the New 52 continuity, what do you guys think of Forever Evil? And how do you think it's going to tie in with the Justice League coming back or if it's revealed that they're actually truly gone and with the Luther of their earth being revealed as the bigger bad. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe.